Okay. Now, uh, welcome to this very important uh, sir, sir. session. Sir, sir, sir. And I can do this. Yeah. Welcome to this speech, please. Okay, 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 okay. Sure. Sir. Good afternoon to our person here. My dear friends, I think your profile is totally different. The delicate profile right from the principal, director, professors, and also the assistant professors categories from n number of disciplines, including engineering, management, agriculture, law, and sociology, psychology. There are n number of background faculty members gathering together. So in this great academic, once again, warm welcome to all for a two-day international faculty development program. I think today we have an eminent personality, the leading and vibrant personality in Bangladesh. In Bangladesh, Dhaka, almost all management people, psychology, social scientists, almost all of them are of our guests today. Guest. He is not new to our institutions. For the past five to eight years, he is closely associated with our institutions. And our institution also closely associated with his own institutions. I think uh, earlier, Uttara Universities, and uh, now he is associated with uh, Kennedy University. Yeah, Kennedy University of Bangladesh. Yeah. Bangladesh. I am really very proud to introduce this great gentleman, uh, Dr. Nazru Islam. Pro Vice Chancellor, Kennedy University, Bangladesh. I think the, his research experience and expertise is something different. The knowledge acquiring is something different. He finished his master's program in abroad, the PhD from Thailand Central University Institute, International Institute, with funding. He has more than 30 years of teaching experience. He has gained n number of research scholars. He has visited almost all countries, more than 20 countries in uh, African, Southeastern Asian countries, European countries, American continent. There are uh, various countries he has visited, especially for the purpose of education, conferences, sharing of research experience and expertise. And also he has published enormous research articles in refereed journals. Refereed journals. He, for the past one and a half decade, he is functioned as a head, dean, director in various institutions. For the past two years, he is closely associated with the Canadian University of Bangladesh. Now he is functioned as a pro vice chancellor. He is the right person to talk about it. 360 degree classroom management, especially what I am suggesting, what I am talking about, know, leadership, leadership in the classroom. The leadership is totally different. Every teacher should be a leader. Every citizen should be a leader. Every politician should be a leader. So, where you are teaching, what you are doing, in the, according to the situation, so your role should be a leader. I think I thought uh, that Nazrul is going to talk about if you are in the classrooms, you are a great leader. Then you are responsible to make more number of leaders, vibrant leaders for the country, for the society. So as a teacher role, the teacher's role is very, very important to make them, to make up every students to be a great leader. This is our responsibilities. So in this uh, the August audience, Dr. Nazar is going to talk about Leadership in classrooms management, leadership, so how to managing yourself, how to managing your students, how to motivating our students, how to motivating students to be a great leader, great leader for his own life or also the corporate life, the community life. So on behalf of you and also my own behalf, I render a warm welcome, my dear friends, Dr. Nazrul. I think he always used to interacting with us. Every day we are frequently interacting with the social media. In a rare situations, some other occasions, we use to talk over the phone. Every day we are updating the information, upgrading information. So everything for the betterment of uh, academic performances. The research oriented. Right. So such a great personality today, he is with us. Please warm welcome Dr. Nazrul sir to share your 
the expertise and the experience for our faculty members. Thank you, the groups. You have given your wonderful opportunities and also accepted our invitation to take short span appeal. Thank you. Welcome once again. Thanks, Professor Man, for introducing me to our colleagues. I am really, really uh, privileged uh, to speak in front of SAS uh, intellectual gathering uh, this afternoon. So uh, you have already heard, my dear colleagues, you heard that uh, I am going to discuss a part of uh, 360 degree classroom management, and that is uh, leadership in classroom teaching. Usually, uh, what happens? You, we, we might be a good teachers. We might be good intellectuals. We have, we may have very good knowledge in a subject, but we may not be accepted by our students. What is that reason? Most often we see junior faculty members come to us and say, sir, students are not attentive. They, they don't like to listen to us. So how can I listen to them? These are the common problem when we, we work in a university or teaching organization, we see this kind of problem. Therefore, this, uh, this is a, you can say this is a kind of uh, uh, problem. Because if you are not accepted, if you are not listened to your students, then how can you uh, work with them? Therefore, I think management is first, and that is classroom management is first, management. And the person who is going to manage, he is the, he is the manager, he is the leader, and that is me and you. That means we must have to manage. So for managing a class, we, we must be very strategic and we must be very careful and we, we, we must uh, be interactive and we must be able to uh, understand the environment. So few things which are very important in classroom management, for example, establish relationships with the students. I mean working relationships. So we can ask this question to ourselves, whether we, are, we have established relationships with them. That means if it is a first class, so are you going to um, uh, introduce yourself or are you, are you going to uh, know your uh, class? So by doing this, we can uh, make relationships or establish relationships with them. So relationship matters for management. Second issue I'd like to say here is very important that <clears throat> we as teachers, we should train our students on how learning takes place in the classroom. That is also very important. We must tell them that how learning, it is. this is a, uh, teaching learning environment. So how learning is uh, occurred in the classroom. And you also know that uh, there are uh, uh, three issues concerned with this learning, thinking, feeling, and doing. So thinking, feeling, doing. Thinking will come because if the students are attentive and they listen to you, then only they will think your uh, speech, they will think your words, and they will then they will feel and they will do, that is doing. So in this learning process, I think um, we also should encourage our students, we should teach our students how to learn in classroom. Next issue I would like to say just uh, like uh, that you, uh, we uh, should use our time properly in classroom. In classroom time is, uh, there is a time constraint, one hour, one and a half hour or three hour. So we must utilize this time perfectly. And the next issue I would like to say that the lesson plan, what I am going to discuss, what is my plan, that is also very important. That also is to be disclosed and communicated to our students. That can help uh, make the students be more favorable to your uh, teaching, your class. I also would like to focus on the standard behavior, behavior, behavior of the faculty member. What behavior you are going to set for this group of people? How are you going to behave with them? That also matters. And most often we see conflicts come from the behavior of the faculty member. Uh, you, uh, sometimes the students say this teacher is very rough, very rude, very autocratic or something like this. So we as faculty members, we must also establish our behavioral standards. What behavior I am going to expose to my students. And last of all, the influencing the students. So we must be able to influence. So. Among these few uh, important uh, things, I am going to discuss only the one uh, that is the leadership in classroom teaching. That means how to influence my teacher in managing our 
class. Leadership, I mean here, influencing, influencing my students. That is leadership. How can I influence my students in my, uh, in my class? So, uh, slide, please. <clears throat> yes, sir. Yeah, the second slide. One minute, sir. <clears throat> Yeah, second one. Next one. This one, sir. Next one. Next. Next. Amitra, go to the next slide. Second slide. This one, sir. Leadership style. Second, yeah, second slide. Second one. slide. Second yeah. after the. Uh, this one. This one. Okay. This one. Okay, okay. In this uh, talk, I will discuss uh, a few things regarding the leadership issue. I am sure that all of you know it. All of you are living in real life in reality. Even then, we, I will share my thought with you. And also leadership style. Style. There are different styles. And how which style is more appropriate in our classroom teaching. Then we shall discuss a little bit about the sources of power. Organizational source power comes from organizational, also from person. This is another part I'm going to uh, discuss. And teaching as a form of leading and teacher leadership. And in, in uh, discussing leadership as a leading leader, as a teacher in classroom, I am going to discuss situational leadership style, which is suggested by a scholar. So we shall discuss uh, that style. And we shall try to um, uh, relate that style with the classroom teaching, uh, classroom leadership. And uh, we shall also discuss how students are different in learning. There are different types of students. IQ and EQ is different. So we shall discuss few things regarding it. And how to establish leadership in class. That's the last issue I am going to discuss. So before starting this, I would like to start with the uh, differences in students. Usually what happens, there are different types of students in our class. Research shows that the IQ and EQ level in, in uh, intelligent quotient an emotional quotient on, or emotional intelligence are different among the students in our class. Therefore, I should at least understand their, uh, at least IQ, I should say, IQ level I should understand. I'm sure that you know that IQ is, uh, is, uh, is equal to uh, the um, expected um, uh, age and the chronological age, chronological age, that means actual age, when you divide actual age with the um, um, uh, mature, uh, mature days and multiply the 100, then it will become IQ. For example, a student study in class five, that means five class, he should be ideally uh, five and five, 10 years old. But if he study, he can understand, uh, being a student at class five, he can understand uh, class eight um, curriculum. Then uh, that means uh, uh, he's um, at the age of uh, 10 and 3, 13 years, he should be at the uh, eight, class 8 level. But at the age of 10, he understands um, uh, class uh, 8 uh, curriculum and books and other things. That means his mental maturity is higher. So if I divide this mental maturity, that means 10 plus 3, 13 divided by 10, that is realized by uh, chronological age, mental age divided by chronological age 10 and multiplied by 100, then it will come 130. That means the student who is at the class 5 and understand the lecture curriculum of class 8, his IQ level is 130. And a study shows that in our classroom, our students' IQ are from 85 to 115. That means IQ level is 85 to 115. That means there are students who are below 100, and there are students who, there are some students who are the upper side of the, that means their IQ is more than 100. That means they can think advance. So in our class, this kind of students are there. Therefore, we must uh, be careful about the differences of IQ. And also, you know, the emotional intelligence is also here important point. That also differs from students to student. And in, in emotional intelligence, it is said that there are five issues. Self-awareness, that means uh, of the students, then self, um, 
uh, awareness, then uh, empathy, then self motivation, then social skills. So these are the skills. Usually these are very low at the students' level, but even then, uh, there are some students uh, who um, uh, emotional intelligence might be little bit higher than other students in class. So that first of all, we should recognize that. Our students' understanding level, IQ level, EQ level is different. So this is the first thing as a faculty we should recognize. Now let us come to the leadership issue. Uh, can you please go to the next slide? Yes, sir. <clears throat> please. Next slide. Please go to next slide. Yes, sir. Is this the slide? What is leadership? No, next, next one. Yes. Next one. What is leadership? <clears throat> it is not here. Please change. Ma, click on it. On the slide, let me click on it. Not this one. Previous one. <clears throat> Previous. Yeah. Okay. Okay, fine. <clears throat> so leadership, I mean that influencing ability or influencing capability of the individual. When we speak in front of a group, then we should have, we must have our influencing capability. Now what teachers usually do? Teacher provide direction. Teachers can energize the students and by directing and energizing them, teacher can obtain the uh, voluntary commitment from the students voluntary commitment that is leadership not uh, commitment obtained uh, by coercion commitment obtained by um, uh, creating force not that voluntary commitment to come from them from uh, because of your direction because you could successfully energize them because you you could successfully convince them to your lecture therefore leadership in classroom i mean the ability to influence our students in classroom, influencing capability. Now, influencing capability, the person who can influence the capability is high. He can, he can influence better the students. Therefore, the higher the influencing capability, the greater the leader will likely be. And he, he will have more and more followers. That means the person who can influence high, higher, he will have more and more followers. That means influence is the key word. How are you going to influence? This influence can be the function of uh, your uh, expertise, may, can be the function of your presentation style or your uh, understanding your class or a lot of factors, internal and external factors might be, might be connected with this influencing ability of the leader or the teacher in classroom. Please, next slide. Therefore, I would like to say that influence, to influence a leader has to trust more, trust your students, trust. If there is a problem of trust, create trust, trust, and then uh, listen, listen more, talk more, delegate more, encourage more, support more, smile more, develop more, involve more, and praise more. That means to influence a leader or a class teacher has to do this, has to develop this, every has to utilize uh, this uh, technique, delegate, talk, smile, develop, involve, etc. Please, next slide. Okay. <clears throat> As we are talking about the leadership style, usually there are two types of leaders we see one is autocratic, another one is uh, democratic or, uh, um, or other type of leadership. So uh, look at this uh, slide, you can see that use of authority by leader, autocratic, charismatic, consultative, democratic, and legislative. You see that the autocratic uh, uh, leader, and then it, it uh, goes to the, uh, um, without autocracy, that is legislative. Similarly, area me, of freedom. Sir. 
Hello, excuse me, sir. One minute. Uh, people are having some sort of problem in viewing the slideshow. Just a minute. Hold on, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Dinesh, sir, uh, is it visible for you? Yeah, I, I can see it. I yeah. can see now. Okay. Now, as I was uh, discussing about the leadership style, uh, here in this slide, do we see that, that a leadership, a leadership autocracy is fair, increase, 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 and becomes autocratic. That means there is no freedom. And freedom is least in autocratic leadership style, and it increases, increases, and in leadership style, it becomes 100. But we should keep in mind that leadership style, leadership style is not very good in classroom teaching. That you cannot, you cannot uh, do whatever your students want. That is not possible in classroom. You need to uh, uh, come to the uh, uh, point between this <clears throat> autocratic and the freedom uh, continuum. <clears throat> now, next slide, please. Yes, sir. We see uh, the person who has got the power, he can influence more. The more the power, the more the influencing capability will likely be. Now, there are two sources of power. One source of power is from personal source. That is your expertise. That means you know better than anybody of that subject. You have the expert knowledge on the subject. That is one source. And another is you have a very good connections with others and your uh, organizations and relatives and other things. That is called referent power. So here in this class, actually, expert power is the personal source. And organizational power is legitimate power. That means for Okupa, as a teacher, we enjoy some power. We are powerful, reward power and coercive power. We also can uh, suppress them and coerce them. Uh, but uh, the, these are the sources of power. But in classroom teaching, uh, basically, expert power, and at the same time, I, I should not say that we should force it, but you know, combination of the things, that means we must understand our uh, class first, and based on it, we should utilize our personal source of power and uh, the organizational source of power. Next, please. <clears throat> So teaching refers to process of imparting knowledge and skills from a teacher to a learner. That means we are basically disseminating knowledge, information to our learners, to our students. So it is a process and encompasses the activities of educating or instructing. That means we are educating them, we are giving instructions to them, we are directing them. And um, uh, and uh, it is an act or experience that has a formative effect on the mind, character, or physical ability of the individual. Formative uh, effect on mind, character, and physical. That means, look at the physical ability. You know, sometimes we see the zests or posture of the faculty member matters to the students. Zests or posture of the faculty members matters, you know. That sometimes happens. So your, <clears throat> your movement in class, the way you speak, the pronunciation, a lot of things are important. The, your involvement, your psychological and physical involvement. So a lot of things are important in, in imparting this knowledge and skills uh, from you to your learner. Therefore, the lead, teacher leader means the ability to inspire and influence your students towards your goal. Your goal is to uh, make them educated. Your goal is to disseminate knowledge, your goal is to teach them and educate them. Therefore, we, 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 you must have, uh, be able to inspire and influence them in class. Next. <laughs> next one, please go to next one, next slide. Next slide, please. Hello. Yes, sir. Is it visible for you? Yeah, before before that. Okay, this one. Okay, okay, fine. Next one. Next. Not this one. This one. Okay, okay, this one. Yes. <clears throat> now, teacher leader. Teachers provide leadership in classrooms. That I just discussed. And the 
behaviors they exhibit as a leaders impact a variety of students outcomes specifically transformational leadership has been shown to be an important predictor of students we are here as a transformational leader not as a transactional leader we faculty members are in front of the students not to transact just not to communicate the knowledge or not to disseminate the knowledge we also uh, they are to transform our understanding to our into our students transform our um, the, our students into this uh, knowledge that means we focus here as uh, here transformational knowledge that means we need to change our students we need to we need to make them understand we need to uh, change their status uh, after teaching their understanding level their uh, motivation level so that kind of transformational leadership we talk about in classroom next <clears throat> <clears throat> so in uh, teacher leadership in our, our leadership in classroom teaching we see basically there are two types of skills required for the teacher one is teaching skill another one is the leadership skill teaching skill and leadership skills teaching skills leadership skills in 21st century educator the characteristics that a teacher is an adapter teacher is a communicator teacher is a learner teacher is a visionary teacher is leader teacher is a model in front of the students teacher is a collaborator and teacher is a risk taker lot of things lot of things so basically these all skills are basically classified into two types of skills teaching skill and leadership skills teaching skill are mainly concerned with your delivery concerned with your knowledge or expertise on the subject and leadership skill is mainly concerned with influencing or inspiring your students or how are you going to appear in front of your students whether so they are accepting you or not or how are you going to uh, <clears throat> manage the conflict or disagreements or what should i say uh, creating trust in the class so basically two types of skills are required for a teacher leader and teaching teacher leadership in class next <clears throat> dear colleagues now as i told that i am going to discuss uh, situational leadership i'm going to um, relate this leadership style in our uh, teaching at a classroom and you know that situational leadership style this is a theory suggested by hartsy and blanchard and and they identified four basic leadership styles in situational leadership model telling selling participating and delegating basically four leadership style telling selling participating and delegating these four styles suggested now uh, um, can you please the next slide yes sir next yeah look at this slide leadership style the behavior pattern of an individual who attempts to influence others that means the leader the teacher s1 s2 s3 and s4 i am going to discuss this four telling selling participating and delegating things and developmental levels that is from the part of the students degree to who is a subordinate students have the competence and commitment to accomplish a given task that is d1 d2 d3 d4 now i i shall discuss uh, telling selling this this four things or in other words also called uh from teaching pass directing s1 next slide please <clears throat> so s1 directing provide clear instructions and very close supervision that is telling directing that means what the instructions we give to the students must be very clear and with close supervision so you also should be under, uh, under should understand that whether your instruction reached your class or not that is very important and the s2 is posing this is um, telling continue to provide direction and close supervision offer rational and explain decisions solicit suggestions and give support to a progress that means rational and and uh, solicit suggestion if they have that means you include include them in in your teaching process so that they can also think about about your about the topic you are discussing with them and also uh, coach them 
opposing the second one is to and the third one is supporting the teacher is a facilitator in fact facilitate them next one uh, uh, next slide facilitate them and support task accomplishment you we should facilitate and support them to accomplish their task and share decision making responsibility so this is supporting and last one s one is the delegating that is relinquish decision making and problem solving so these are the four basic areas telling selling participating and delegating these are basically can be matched with uh, with our classroom teaching as a leader next slide please regarding the developmental levels as i told that there are four uh, things d1 d2 d3 d4 uh, enthusiastic beginner d1 uh, and these illusion learner capable but cautious cautious performer and self reliant achiever uh, look at this slide enthusiastic beginner there are uh, there are um, uh, students in class whose competency is very low but they are highly committed they are called they are enthusiastic they are enthusiastic but competency is low another type low to some competence they have little competence but no commitment another type moderate to high that means competence but variable commitment commitment is not very low not very high it varies and d4 that is self reliant achiever we are basically interested to make our um, uh, students self reliant that is high commitment and high competence through our teaching in classroom next slide please <clears throat> next slide so for making our students self reliant or self directed self directed uh, student uh, students readiness is important readiness they must be ready so uh, readiness means the extent to which a student demonstrates the ability and willingness to accomplish a specific task so this is another important point as a faculty member we should keep in mind whether our students are ready to receive or to listen to me or not so readiness is to be checked and that is important uh, before uh, teaching so let next slide let us see the continuum of follower readiness next slide okay here you know low readiness to high readiness r1 to r4 low readiness means unable and unwilling to or insecure they are unable or unwilling they are not interested at all uh, they don't like to listen to us the next test is unable but willing or confident they are unable they might have some problem maybe their iq level is less than 100 but they are willing and confident so in that case we need more uh, repeat repeat the topic uh, repeat and the next level is they are able another type of people who are able but unwilling or insecure or insecure they they understand but they are not willing to learn so they are also not ready and the last one is high level that is the readiness what we are lo look for that is they are able and willing and confident and they are willing to listen to us that means we need to prepare our class our students in such a way so that they will be able they will be willing and they will be confident uh, for learning then only we can say the students are ready to listen to us or listen to me as a teacher as a leader in our class so if the the readiness is low for example unable unwilling then what can be done any teacher can uh, can understand and can uh, depending on the situation can uh, uh, if it is visible to him that the, the students are unable and unwilling to uh, listen to him then uh, he should follow a strategy to make them willing and able to understand next slide please <clears throat> okay in classroom setting we also see uh, four uh, important uh, questions we can ask growth goal is the first question what do we want to achieve is very important uh, are we uh, interested to teach so many things or one topic to do, what do we want to achieve or are we want to only communicate or transact or we want to transform our students what is it so that is to be set first when would like to achieve by this when this will be achieved that, that is the whole part and reality what is the current position and what stops you from moving on so what about the present situation of the student so first your target then what is really basically what they are doing right now what about their standard and status and willingness and competence 
and then what would you do what is your option that also we should think what should be done by us and what will you do and what will be the fastest step so if we we think about these uh, four things goal reality and options and will then definitely we will be able to understand our uh, the standard and the status of our students and we will be able to uh, start better in 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 classroom teaching next slide please <clears throat> now the i would like to introduce another model which is relevant to this classroom uh, teaching and leadership ssdl that means uh, staged self directed learning model this model proposes a way teachers can be vigorously influential while empowering students towards greater autonomy that means our purpose is to make our students independent empower them or man them and make them self directed learner self directed learner so that what we want to do we want to make our students so the key aspects of this uh, theory or model tells us that the teaching methods um, uh, are proposed to match to learners stage of self direction so uh, there are different stages of learners we have seen the four stages readiness so teaching method uh, is to be proposed in such a way so that it messes with the um, with the um, uh, uh, stage of self direction and the ability to be self directed is situational and progression can loop between stages so this ability is situational so that means class to class it will vary and and uh, please next slide next slide please so if we uh, see or fit this ssdl model in classroom setting then we can um, we can see uh, the uh, situation like this uh, for example uh, stage one student if a student is dependent then um, uh, teacher can be authority coach that means coaching with immediate feedback or informational lecture or overcoming deficiencies and resistance so these are the things teacher can do so authority coach if the students class at stage 1 if they are dependent if the stage 2 if they are interested then teacher can be a motivator or guide for example in inspiring lecture plus guided this hello can you listen yes sir yes sir it is audible okay. okay inspiring lecture plus guided discussion goal setting and learning strategies so these are the things can be done by the uh, teacher or faculty if the students are at the level 3 stage 3 that means students are involved then at this stage teacher should be at the role of facilitator that means discussion facilitated by the teacher who participates in as you call seminar or group projects that means in this case teacher must appear as a facilitator and in stage 4 that is the self directed stage the teacher must appear as a consultant or delegator in the chief dissertation or that means he is just uh, uh, giving supervision or consultation to the uh, student a student is now uh, self sufficient now confident and self directed stage so they say they they can do the, they can solve the problem by their own so if we uh, fit this ssdl model with the different stages of our students then a uh, teacher can appear and depend as uh, uh, authority coach motivator facilitator and consultant role next slide please <clears throat> next slide please next one yes sir now i am going to uh, myers briggs type indicator the two must technical uh, but i am try to uh, relate the things with our uh, classroom leadership uh, thing so myers briggs type mbt model also fits with this um, classroom uh, setting classroom setting uh, situational leadership in classroom setting mbti model also fits 
if you look at this mbti model you will see the d1 d2 d3 d4 what we discussed as previously the d1 okay sir can you see me can you listen to me hello yes sir you are audible yes sir okay so uh, d1 sir please enable your mic your mic is off sorry for the interruption there was a <coughs> <clears throat> so if we look at the mbti uh, theory uh, myers briggs um, uh, type indicator we will see that there are basically four things judging sensing feeling thinking sensing intuition feeling and feeling and thinking let us sir please enable your mic hello can you listen to me yes sir yes sir please please you can proceed sir okay now there are calls coming from my side so sorry for the interruption <clears throat> so uh, please go to the next slide next yes sir next next one next. minute sir one minute one yes there uh, next one next please next is it visible sir uh yes visible i would like to skip this next go to creating self led team next next hello yes hello yeah hello here sir hearing hearing your voice you can speak you can speak no problem are you listening to me yes sir yes yes oh, but there is a disturb from my side anyway so can you please go to the next next slide so i would like to skip this same model yes sir situational team leadership hello hello is it audible sir hello yes sir we are audible before next next please next okay this one now sorry dear colleagues now i am going to discuss um, uh, the different state uh, stages of a uh, group group because usually we see there are uh, basically five steps stages of a group forming storming norming performing and adjourning adjourning so there are five stages in in a group association and class is a group so uh, before coming to class uh, they, they, they are... so please enable your mic your mic is off ఇఫ్ 
यस सॉरी सॉरी बहुत ओके शादी का फोन करके अंदर so what we are discussing that there are uh, so uh, four uh, we were discussing the uh, situational leadership and also ss ssdl model and, and we we discussed uh, stage 1 stage 2 stage 3 stage 4 okay so therefore uh, can you please go to the next slide next yes sir please next okay this this one okay right right so uh, dear colleagues so uh, we were uh, i was just interrupted and and, and uh, by so many calls from my country so many people are calling me without any anyway so uh, uh, how do you develop this institutional leader teacher leaders here are some uh, few tips uh, here so uh, as a faculty member or as a leader in class or 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 the teacher in class we should know uh, our leadership style and personality type so we must understand what style we are going to uh, introduce and adapt and what about the personality i am going to uh, exhibit to my students to mm -hmm. my class and also uh, hone our diagnostic skills to better understand the to better understand the um, uh, needs of of uh, of your followers and also different strokes for different folks that means for different groups for different um, uh, 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 type of uh, leadership i think we need to uh, follow use the style most appropriate for the situation and learn to delegate responsibility master the skill of variety uh, of your leadership style and hone your observational skills understand your role as a servant leader not as autocratic leader use the situational leadership model to work well with diversity and know your student learning style and also hone your communication skills through leadership and dispel the notion that one size fits all so this will never uh, uh, one thing will not fit for all and create learning team and and avoid avoid um, adrenaline addiction within teams so these are uh, the uh, few tips and uh, in, in fine i would like to say based on the uh, theories and the discussions we, we made uh, in a nutshell i can say to participate effectively in a class especially in a leadership role one uh, must be able to uh, focus on basically three things communication and build and maintain trust and uh, manage conflict and uh, uh, communicate we know that uh, clear and unambiguous communication of ideas and feelings must be there <clears throat> next slide please next last part and um, uh, make messages complete and specific yes next slide make the messages complete and specific make the verbal and non verbal messages congruent or harmonious with each other and ask for feedback concerning the way in which your messages are received that means the communication is the key word in class in, in leadership classroom uh, leadership and the uh, next is uh, here next slide please next slide yes this will openness and maintain eye contact is another important issue listen without response until the other person has sent a full message paraphrase uh, paraphrase accurately and non evaluatively the sense of the sender's message listen beyond words that is to be aware of non verbal messages and behavior and listen for requests and intentions in others messages particularly in complaints these skills are needed by any teacher leader in any situation or in any situation in any class and next is to what i wanted to say that in addition to communication that is build and maintain trust in in your class and the last one is the managing conflict so um, here in managing conflict i would like to mention only one point that is be critical of ideas 
not the person. Don't be critical uh, for the person, critical for the ideas. Uh, idea, we can, we can criticize the idea, we can discuss about that, we, can, we should not focus on the personal thing or the person. So by uh, this, uh, in a nutshell, by this theory, communicating and build trust, mutual trust, and, um, and uh, uh, maintaining trust, and also by managing conflict in our class, we can appear as a, a good leader in our uh, class. And uh, we hope that uh, uh, when, next, next, next slide please. Next. So we believe that when we are the model in class, when we share and or when we experience, for all all cases, we we must uh, build and maintain trust. That is very important. Trust. That means the kind of relationship is to be developed between a leader and the follower or the students, so that uh, uh, let us act as an effective teacher leader to bring about an autonomous learner who probably will say that I enjoy sharing my learning with others. That means self. Uh, directed learner, then uh, I can identify ways to improve my own and others' work. I can deal positively with praise, instead uh, be criticized and set back. I communicate my learning in different ways. I can set positive challenges to help me achieve my goals, and I can plan a project using SMART targets, learning diaries, and uh, review points to keep me on track. So that means. I am a reflective learner, so we would like to make our uh, learners reflective. We would like to make our learners independent, and we would like to uh, um, uh, make our learners uh, as self-directed learners. So the leadership in classroom teaching can help us to make our students self-directed learners and self-independent learners. So with this, I would like to uh, conclude my uh, lecture today here. So if you have any, any question or anything, then I can uh, discuss with you. Thank you. Many thanks for listening to me. Thank you, sir. Thank you, Nazrul, sir. Pavitra, please, you yes, can sir. put your question. Okay, sir. Uh, thank you, sir. So we had a very intellectual talk today. And uh, we have few questions raised up here. Sir, is it audible to you? Not, not really. Where is that question? Yes, sir. Is it audible? Yeah, audible, audible. Please, question. Yeah. So we have the very first question. How online teaching will help the leadership quality? <laughs> it's an interesting question. Online teaching, you know, again, the attention. How are we going to draw the attention uh, to our students? That is very important. Attention. If you talk, uh, as usual, people will not give attention. So you talk something different. You, uh, it's very difficult, you know. Uh, here, I think um, teaching skill, of course, the uh, subject knowledge and delivering knowledge and also the leadership, both are required. Both are required. Otherwise, people will not listen to us in online teaching. And, you know, in online teaching, uh, uh, people are scattered and they are not under your control. They have the freedom to leave you. Therefore, we must be uh, more careful we must uh, be more careful. We must, uh, I think here, uh, the uh, personal part, that means personal power, what I said, the personal power, leadership power, is more important than um, organizational uh, leadership power, in this case, in um, uh, online teaching. That's a good question. Okay, sir. So uh, the next question is, what are the attributes in making students ready to listen a class? What are the attributes in making students ready to listen a class? Fair enough. Hello. Yes, sir. You're audible yeah. right now. Yeah, please. Question, please. Yes, sir. What are the attributes in making students ready to listen a class? 
Oh, readiness. Yes, yes, readiness. Yes, I have uh, discussed the readiness. It's a very important, very interesting question. Now, you know, in a classroom, class management, as a faculty, we must understand our students' readiness level. What level they are. Are they unable and unwilling? Or unable but willing? Or able or unwilling? What is that? Uh, first, must uh, be able to read it. Now, if the um, if the uh, hello, yes, sir, you're audible. You're Waiting, audible. Sir, you speak no problem. Okay, if the students are uh, uh, unwilling, you know it varies. In our experience, if the students are unwilling, we become autocratic in Bangladesh. Because first of all, you need to um, uh, bring them to a zero level. That means a different level. So how to do that? Now, in that case, if you uh, cooperate or try to facilitate with them, then it will not work. So at that uh, situation, then we uh, become a little bit dominating and try to make them uh, calm. And then uh, once they are at a particular stage, neutral stage, then only you can start talking and you can uh, uh, make them understandable, understanding your uh, lecture. Thank you. Next. Okay. The next question is, uh, participants want to know whether, uh, how the innovative teaching methodology is carried out in your institute. In my country? Yeah. You know, innovative teaching methodology, this uh, online teaching methodology, right? Exactly, sir. Okay. In Bangladesh, you know, right now, uh, uh, private government university is not following this online teaching methodologies much. But private universities, more than 105 uh, uh, universities, each and every university is teaching online. And they are conducting exams and everything is uh, conducted in, in online. And, um, and uh, the response is, I should say, very good. Not excellent, but very good. Students are participating and students are showing interest. But problem is sometimes the internet and other, other problems. But even the, uh, the online teaching, this innovative teaching method is working uh, fantastic and very well in Bangladesh, especially in private sector education. Great, sir. Thank you. Sir, is it audible? Sir, is it audible? Yes, yes, please. Yeah, so the next question is, can you explain a strategy to handle readiness? <laughs> no, that is another lecture I should I should have I shall have to give. You know, readiness, another lecture, maybe in another lesson how to make our students ready. Okay. A lot of things to discuss. So uh, the next question is, which leadership style suits lecturers in our country? Uh, leadership style, I said the mix. You know, it depends on situation. For example, if the undergraduate students are there, then they are, I can presume that they are uh, uh, dependent. So authority uh, leadership style or coach leadership style must be useful. But if uh, the uh, my class is grad class, I can presume that they are self-directed class and they are matured. So in that class, I can appear as a consultant or delegator or something or facilitator like this. So that will work. And uh, if I see my students are interested, then I can be a motivator or guide in front of them. So one, one uh, spe specific style may not work for each and every class. It is not possible. Combination. Okay. So the next question is, whether online teaching gives leadership quality because there is no face-to-face -face communication? Yeah, why not? Because leadership is, uh, is nothing but influencing capability, influencing power. How are you going to influence? If, you, if, if they are connected with you online, then you have the, uh, the liberty and, and you, you are the leader and you can uh, motivate them and influence them through this connection. It's not a physical question of physical attendance. It's a question of connection. How are you connecting them? We are connecting through online. Uh, we are connecting with them. Now, it depends on you whether they will leave or they stay with you. 
depends on you depends uh, on your uh, inspiring capability depends on your uh, lecture depends on your uh, delivery it depends so leadership i mean here the uh, influencing capability inspiring capability how are you going to inspire them inspire them so that they will not leave you they will listen to you they will learn from you okay so what is the impact of self lead teams for teachers and students oh uh, definitely it is good if the uh, team is self led or uh, self directed then in that case i as a faculty i am sure that all uh, all over can it be your faculty members they are in problem rather than they are in problem in in teaching self directed group or team because in that case uh, you need um, experience um, um, experience you need um, thorough knowledge you need um, uh, practical experience otherwise it will be very difficult to uh, um, uh, consult them difficult to advise them because they are enthusiastic they are interested they are involved so they are uh, uh, ready to uh, listen to you from learn from you so uh, in that case teacher or faculty must be more careful than the than the group who are not self led or self directed so must be more careful and more serious okay sir so uh, which type of leadership model helps in online teaching oh that's a good question i think mix you know no there is not a single leadership style who is is who is can be followed in each and every situation it depends for example if i if i talk in front of bangladeshi people then there might have a kind of leadership but the continuum as i as i showed continuum is from uh, i have shown the continuum uh, from use of authority by leader and areas of freedom from group so uh, we should be in between this continuum Auto, auto, autocratic to legislature so only one or single um, uh, leadership style may not work similar in uh, uh, like classroom teaching here you know what can we, we do can we uh, say somebody that you leave from here we cannot but he will stay if you can make him you can keep him stay so it depends on that means convincing more convincing more inspiring capability is required in this case or charismatic charismatic um, uh, quality uh, is required for online leadership i think okay sir so the next question is how teaching will become commercialization <laughs> commercialization yes if it is a non it is an online teaching then it is commercial but again you know uh, online means that there you know that there are companies who are uh, who are uh, creating videos of lectures and then selling it to the corporate personalities because they don't have time on a particular uh, class therefore they can see those lectures and they can buy it so yes there is a commercial prospect of this um, online uh, uh, digital uh, teaching uh, style there are commercial sites definitely there are commercial sites any other hello audible sir yeah yeah now yeah, listening yeah. yes yes sir next question uh, yes sir we are in the end of the question session so i just request our uh, director dr k maran to enter the session one minute sir hold on oh, no no i think uh, dr dayalan Nazrul sir, yes, yes, sir, yes, I am, yes. I am in line. Yeah, very nice presentation. It's very excellent feedback for you. What a audience given a very positive and vibrant feedback. Really, very thankful for your great presence and sharing your rich experience with our delegates. I'm really very really thankful. Right, and also convey regard to family. With this, the first session will be over. that before the starting of second session we have the start yeah holy suresh kumar sir call patran sir suresh kumar sir call launch sir ah right sir suresh sir sir 
ஜெமி மேடம் அவங்கள இது போட்டுறங்களே ஜெமின் நான் ஒரு நம்பர் அனுப்பி இருக்கேன் பாரு இது பாரு அவங்க கோஹோஸ்ட் ஆகி ஓகே 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 சார் ஓகே ஓகே போட்டோம் வந்துட்டாங்க <laughs> 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 தினேஷ் <laughs> போட்டாங்க <laughs> 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 Hey, Dr. Sam, can you hear us from Kenya? Yeah, I can hear you clearly. Okay, all right, all right. So uh, there is some polling happening online. So the minute the professor in charge tells you to start, you can start okay. off. 
Yeah. No problem. Dr. Yep, C. I... Maran is there. He is the dean. There are Dr. Venkatesh. There's a big team. They are doing a big um, job. Good, and good. we have over 300 professors from yes. all over. Okay. Right. And they okay. are very elite. They're very big. They're very posh, top professors uh, yes. who are from all over commerce, management, mm -hmm. agriculture, engineering, arts yeah. and science. You know, a lot of people are there. Dr. Ramesha is there. Dr. Gopinath. I know a couple of them. And uh, these people are like uh, top guns, you know, uh, Good. coming to do something better using yes. technology. And uh, there, there are a lot of leaders here, HOD level leaders, senior professors. Okay. So yes. whatever you can tell us what is happening in Kenya, what are you people right. doing and how a professor teacher can take this situation? Uh, because there mm -hmm. are people, professors from South India, North India. It's a mix, yes. a very big yeah, mix. A, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and you can also share your experience when you did your PhD, you know. Uh, and your little experience in India and back to Kenya. Yeah. What's the time there now? I think so you're five and a half hours night, behind us. No, now it's 12.50, exactly 12.50 noon. Afternoon 12.50, okay, so fine, it's okay. Just the polling here. ended, sir. Okay. okay. So can we, uh, Dr. Maran, can we ask uh, Dr. Sam to start? Yeah, you can just, just you ask him to start, no problem. All right, sir. Samuel, can you please uh, take over from here? Fine, I'll do so. Yeah, please. So a very good afternoon. Yeah, very good afternoon to all of you. Well, I count it as a privilege. I mean, to speak to all of you abroad. And I, even as I'm speaking from here, Kenya, Africa, you know, it's a connection. We are connecting. The world has become a global village, as they say it. Okay. And first, I want to acknowledge even the presence of the great people, great minds, as I call them. We have uh, HODs, we have professors, we have uh, directors, and we have faculty members. You know, these are great minds that we are coming together. And I love one statement that says this, iron sharpens iron, so one man sharpens the other. You know, we are sharpening each other in this forum. It's not about a show off, but we are learning from one another. I've loved what uh, Professor Nazrul was speaking from Bangladesh, if I'm not wrong. You know, he has put a lot of inputs in us, in the lecturers, in the HODs, in the, in the professors, in the directors, faculty members. You know, we don't know everything. If somebody says that he knows everything, I think that is a misconception. So we are learning from here, we're learning from there, we're learning from Africa, I've learned much from India too. So we are coming here to build one another. And I also want to thank uh, Professor Samuel Johnson, even for the efforts that he's taking and other professors that they're taking to coordinate all of us. You know, it's not an easy task. It's not an easy job. A lot of efforts have been taken or a lot of efforts have been put in to see that this kind of programs are a success. So, my congratulations to you, Professor uh, Samuel Johnson. You're doing a good job. Also the other professors who are coordinating so that the students may move from where they are now to a place where they want to be in future. All this is for the sake of our students. I believe so. So the professors are doing a lot of work, the lecturers, the HODs, and the faculty members. So, and I'm also glad that I know Professor Samuel Johnson will be speaking on the last day of this uh, forum on the 20th of this month. That will be on a Wednesday. So we know we should expect much. It's going to unleash a lot of input into our lives. So what do I want to speak about today? Or what do I want to share with us? This will be a two-way traffic. Last time when I was given a chance or rather when I was given an opportunity to share, I spoke about attitude, and I was talking about attitude from the point of view of the lecturers, or rather from the HODs, the professors, okay? Today I will speak something more or less the same on attitude, but I want to speak on 
self esteem what is self esteem but before that i wish to ask a question okay i want to ask a question what do you say or what do we say to ourselves when we speak or rather when we speak to ourselves or what do we say let me split it into two what do we say when we speak to ourselves this is all about self esteem okay some people have a very low self esteem very low others have a very high self esteem of course when i say high it exceeds we should have a high self esteem but some of it ex goes beyond which becomes pride but we should have high self esteem but it should not be on the point that it goes to be pride but let us have a high self esteem but let me start with a, a low self esteem you know sometimes and even i've asked a question what do we say when we speak to ourselves some people will say this and now i'm talking on the point on on the aspect of the hods and the, the the professors and the faculty members and the directors sometimes when we are sharing or when we are speaking to these students these young ones you know we have a low self esteem and the students i can assure you even when we are students or rather the students will know that maybe this professor or this teacher or this lecturer that this person is not or rather we're not expecting or rather what we expect from him or her is not what we are receiving but they may not be able to say that this uh, the guide or the professor has a self uh, low self esteem but in real sense he or she is not able to deliver okay so what we need to do what we need to do we as uh, professors and hods and faculty members we need to have a high uh, self esteem so that we may deliver you know we are an example we are an example we remain to be examples to our students and when they grow up i remember the question that we would be asked when we are when we are small and when we are in this lower classes what do you want to be when you grow up and we will raise our hands others would say i want to be a pilot i want to be a doctor in indian context all of us or most of you they want to be engineers they want to be doctors i think that is the biggest uh, um, profession that people want to to attain but how many students would say maybe in a class of 40 how many students would raise their hands and say i want to be a teacher or i want to be a lecturer very few most of them i want to be a doctor i want to be a pilot i want to be an engineer why do you think that very few would say that i want to be a lecturer so it's a question that we need to ask and maybe the professors who have gone ahead of us they can give us the reasons but as we interact we shall see why so maybe they would see that that teacher or that lecturer he he has a very he's not well up he's not the way he's supposed to be okay so sometimes and in in ourselves you know we'll say like this i just i just know it won't work out okay that is a one point of low self esteem on the other hand sometimes we say i just don't like myself okay they may not say it verbally they may not say it verbally but in real sense people see people see okay another statement that i want to give or another phrase first they will see you and then they receive you okay first they will see you and then they receive you okay so we see or people see we have two eyes okay so the first thing that people before they receive you they have to see you first so how are the students seen their professors how are they seen their gurus as it were okay how do they see their gurus how do they see their faculty members how do they see the hod how does he handle a situation okay sometimes you go to a hod or maybe a professor but how he handles it then you wonder why is he handling it like that and i am a student to him or to her okay so that maybe could be a a, a result of low self esteem so what am i talking about here why am i really insisting on this so we as professors we as hods let us try to build a strong uh, or rather high self 
esteem, then only the students, when they see us, they're going to receive us. And we're going to have more hands raised when they ask, or rather when we ask a class of 40, okay? How many of you want to be a professor? Then they'll raise the hand. How many of you want to be a teacher? When I grow up, I want please, to be a teacher. Please, 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 please. One minute, one minute. Uh, dear delegates, dear delegates, please, please, uh, when you are come to the classroom, you should come with formal. Please, I think uh, some of the uh, audience are informing, yes. uh, some of them sitting and informally without dress and other things. Uh, this is a very, very leading forum. There are many, many of them, so literature, uh, literature, uh, Yes. Uh, leading personalities. Uh, when you are in the classroom, what you should think, don't think like that uh, formal class. You, though the informal class, at least you should yes. be able to address. The proper dressing is very important. I'm not asking a formal dress. Please, I don't know who are all. I know the people. Please try to correct yourself. I think some of the ladies are also watching. Uh, you also watching. Please, please. Yes. Yeah, you can proceed. So, you can proceed. What, what, should I, what should I do, sir? What should I do? I didn't get clearly. Yeah, no, 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 for you, no, this is fully for information for audience, audience, not for you, okay. don't do it, please, okay. please. Okay. Yeah. okay, sorry, 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 I thought it was for me, okay, fine, thank you, thank you, that is a good thing, you know, yeah, so teachers are always there to guide, and I like that, professor, I acknowledge you, so I, I was just talking about it, I was just saying, sometimes what happens, do we have, uh, do we have a strong self-esteem? And maybe just to talk on what professor has just mentioned about formal and informal. Can that student, can that student, can he see how the professor is presenting himself? How do you appear in class? How do you dress yourself? So if the professor is just coming like that shaggy, then the, the, the teacher would say, oh, sorry, the student will say like this. I remember my teacher would, or my professor would just come like that. But let us be example. Let us be a good example to those who we are bringing from that small stage and bringing them up. Okay, let them desire to be great people or lecturers or teachers in future. Another thing or another statement that we mostly make and still on the side of the lecturers or the people who are teaching or the gurus rather, okay? I, I always have bad luck. Sometimes we say like that, you know, we as, uh, when you are teaching these young people, let me let me call them young people. Let me call them young because they are, they are young and we are slightly, we have gone ahead of them, okay? Sometimes we say, I always have bad luck. My class never performs as the other class, okay? So what happens? Why do we have to ask ourselves that question? But maybe, as I may put it, because of low self-esteem, you think that you're not able to perform like another, Professor, but as I come down, as I narrow down, I'll explain why such results appear, why you don't perform better, or why you don't get good results compared to another uh, professor. But just to, to, to mention, this is because we never sharpen our axe. You know, an axe is the one that you use here in Africa. We have one tool that we use for cutting firewood. You know, we'll cut firewood, we cut firewood. And I'll give a small example or a small il uh, illustration, okay? I'll give a small illustration so that I may bring this point of how we don't sharpen our ax, okay? And I remember recently, Professor Samuel Johnson said one statement that really rang in my mind. He said this, before the teacher gives homework, he has to do a lot of homework. Let me repeat myself. As per he said, I'm quoting Professor Samuel Johnson. He said this, before the teacher does, or rather before the teacher gives homework, he has or she has to do a lot of homework. This should really sink in we professors, in we HODs, in we directors. Before you go to teach that class, before you go to give uh, that, uh, that assignment, have you really done much? Have you really researched? Have you done enough that the students can say, yes, really, that professor is giving us some content, okay? So before the teacher gives homework, he or she has to do a lot of homework. Now, let me come to the illustration that I want to give about sharpening our acts. The story goes like this. Once upon a time, there were two people. One was employed some few months or one year ago, and another one 
was employed after. So this man comes and his boss or his employer uh, tells the new employee, you go and start to cut wood, firewood, a tree, you know, that wood, you go and cut it with your ax. So this person who was employed for almost one year ago was not able to cut more than two trees a day, okay? But this person who has just been employed recently cuts or cuts down more than five trees a day. So the person who was employed earlier on started complaining. Why are you in giving increment to Mr. So-and-so or Professor So-and-so who has just recently joined our college, but I have been here for five years, but you have never given me an increment. So the employer said this, go and ask what this uh, professor or this woodcutter, what he does that has made me give him an increment. So he went, the earlier employee who was employed one year, goes and asked now the fresh employee who has been employed. And he told him this, for me to cut three trees per day and for you to cut one tree per day, I'll give you the secret. The secret is this, whenever I cut a tree or whenever I make a tree to fall down, what I normally do, I normally sharpen my ax. I normally sharpen it. I normally sharpen it. So that makes me to cut more trees. So what is the point I'm trying to bring across to we dear, uh, dear HODs and professors and faculty members? That we must do a lot of research. We must do a lot of research so that we may deliver, so that we may deliver to our students. So, and that makes us to come out from a low self-esteem. Now we start going up to a high self-esteem. So let us learn how to sharpen our arts, okay? Then another thing that I would want to share too also, sometimes, you know, people who have low self-esteem will wear a mask, not the mask for the, for the present disease, but a mask, okay? A mask, internal mask. Let me give another illustration. Another illustration I'll give. I, I like giving illustrations so that we may understand fully that what we are speaking about. Remember I started by sharing there in the beginning that iron sharpens iron. So one man sharpens another. We are sharpening one another. I believe we are sharpening one another. So let me come to the illustration that I want to give. So one man is employed in an office. He had a very low self-esteem. And a person was repairing his telephone line. Those days when we had those telephone landlines, you know, with those big phones. And a man knocks at his door. And this man pretends that he's speaking. Oh, yes, I can handle it. No problem. I can handle it. Okay. Then after some time, he keeps the, the dial down. He keeps it down. And then he asks the man, okay, please, what can I do for you? Then the man tells him, oh, sir, I was just repairing your phone. I was just repairing your line. There's a problem. So what am I saying here? This person who had a low self-esteem, he was wearing a mask. And sometimes, you know, we as uh, professors, HODs, sometimes we wear masks, even in the classrooms, in, the, in front of the students. Okay, so let us try to put off this mask. Let us be real. Let us face them. Let us face the students. Let us deliver. Let us deliver, okay? Previously, it was being spoken about classroom management leadership. We are leaders. We are leaders. And I love what Professor Nazrul was speaking about, although I was on and off. But I believe he was really having a lot of input. How do we manage these students? So we have to have a high uh, self-esteem. But remember, I said high self-esteem is not an issue of pride. Let's put pride first out. But we are talking that we are confident. We can speak to our students. They can really say, yes, I remember that professor. Last time I shared that, but I can touch on it lightly. I said, let that student say, I admire that professor. I admire that HOD. I admire that director. And I can give a good example 
of my professor in India, because it's always good to give praise due where it deserves. My professor in India is called Professor Tamil Mani. He would really do that work when he was correcting the thesis. He would do it with perfection. He would not want those full stops to get out. He would not want me to put commas where I'm not supposed to put. He would not want me to make wrong sentences. So I admire him. And whenever I'm trying to train another student or whenever I'm trying to train somebody else, I always remember what my professor did to me. So it's something that I can emulate. It's something that I can copy from him. It's something that I really love. And that's what has made me to desire to be more in the line of teaching, in the line of more of management, in the line of bringing those people from that low level to a higher level. So that's what I wanted to share that let us, let us, let us have a high self-esteem. And this is going to be an impact even to those who are watching us. Remember, I said this, I'm repeating this often, that first they will see you, then they will receive you. First they will see you, then they will receive you. So how we present ourselves to the kids, let me call them kids, or to the students, how we present ourselves to them, then they're going to desire and truly, they're going to have a bright future. So as I come to an end, what are the impact? Let me show, what is the impact? Maybe two or three, four, five points. What is the impact of low self-esteem? Then we get stress. We get a lot of stress. So if a professor has, or a lecturer or a director, remember I said they are watching us. If you have a low self-esteem, you have stress. You never finish the assignment on time. Sometimes you take the, you take the, the students bring assignment to you. You're not finishing it on time. So what do you think? You're affecting the life of people. Remember, you're affecting the life of people. So that because of stress, low self-esteem, then you have self-pity. You think that maybe your colleague is doing better than you, but you need not have self-pity. You need not have self-pity on, on your own, okay? Just try, sharpen your ax, I repeat. Remember to sharpen your ax and you will, you will be at par with your colleagues, okay? Then it makes you feel inadequate, okay? If you have a low self-esteem, this makes you to feel inadequate, but you need not feel inadequate. Remember you are the teacher. Remember you are the professor. Remember you are the director there. You have been given an assignment either by your college or the government of India or the government of Kenya to impart knowledge to these students. So it's always, it's always good uh, to have a high self-esteem. Maybe another last point that I would want to share here. If a professor or even a HOD or we teachers or we uh, faculty members have low self-esteem, we don't accept mistakes. Okay, a student can tell you, excuse me, teacher, or excuse me, professor, excuse me, sir, as we say it there, excuse me, sir. I think there, there was a small mistake. Can you try to clarify for us? Yeah, humbly just explain to, uh, to, to the student, okay? Just explain to him or her. So that makes you, or rather that makes them to know that you're willing to help. But if you have a low self-esteem, then you'll never accept your mistake. You'll always think that you are right. So low self-esteem makes you not to accept your mistake. So it's good that uh, we have a high, uh, high self-esteem. Another point that I would want, want to share here is that a common phrase, as a man thinks, so is he. As a man thinks, so is he. What you think, what you think, then you're going to be that what you have thought, or rather you are a result of what you have been thinking. So as a man thinks, so is he. So we should think highly, we should think highly. We should have a high self-esteem. And that I believe is going to improve uh, the, the, classroom, the classroom environment. 
But if you have a low self-esteem, I'm very sure we're not going to go far in any way or the other. So as maybe as I come to my conclusion and as I expect some, some questions, remember, we are a product of what we think. We are a product of what we think. Then I just want to say like this, very key or very important point here. Let us remember to sharpen our acts. And I'm back in this point from what Professor Samuel said last time. It's a, it's a point that really rang in my mind and it always rings that before you give that homework, let us do a lot of homework. In a nutshell, let us do our assignment. Let us do our assignment to the fullest so that the students will see us. And again, as I said there earlier on, before they receive us, they will see us. Or rather, first they see you, then they'll receive us. Uh, I think maybe that's the little that I wanted to share. Maybe Professor, if you can hear me. Hello? Yes, sir. Hearing, hearing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, Professor. So that's what I was talking about. And I'll give one example, maybe as I come to a conclusion, I'll give one example, but it's more of an illustration about Abraham Lincoln. He's one of the president of the United States of America, Abraham Lincoln. Okay, if Abraham Lincoln had a low self-esteem, he would never have become the president of United States of America. So the first point, he failed in business at the age of 21. Okay, I've tried to paraphrase them. The second point, he was defeated in a legislative race at the age of 22. Then he failed at business at 24. Then his wife died at 26. Okay, then he had a nervous at the, at the back. He had a nervous breakdown at the age of 27 and he lost a congregational race at the age of 34. Again, he lost a senatorial race at the age of 45. He failed in an effort to become the vice president at the age of 47 and lost a senatorial race again at the age of 49. But more importantly, he was elected president of United States at the age of 52. Well, you may not remember all those points that I have given, nine of them or eight of them, but he had some, he had some failures here and there, lost his business, lost his wife, lost in a legislative uh, race, but he never lost hope. He never had low self-esteem at any one given time. And at long last, he became the president of United States of America at the age of 52. So, in pattern or rather in conclusion, for us to have a high self-esteem, we have to have commitment. We have to have commitment. Commitment is very key for us to go up to so high, as we said last time. For us, we have to have commitment. Then again, we have to have the desire. You have been given that responsibility. You have been given that responsibility as a professor, as a HOD. Remember, you have to have that desire to accomplish your mission. Last time I said that it's not only a profession, but it's also a calling. It should come from the heart. It should come from the heart. But if it's not from the heart and we're only waiting for that big fat wallet, then I think we shall not have any impact on those who we are leading. Okay. Then again, the last point here I want to share, we are the captain of our own ship. We are the captain of our own ship. Nobody is going to come and do that assignment for you. Nobody is going to come and do that assignment for us. We as professors, we as uh, faculty members, it's upon us to do that assignment that we have been given or that has been bestowed unto us or that has been uh, delegated unto us so that these students, or rather we may cause an impact in their lives. So I, I think Professor, that's the little that I wanted to share this afternoon with my fellow colleagues there in India and all over the world. So I'm very glad for this opportunity that has been given to me. Thank you. 
thank you very much for your great uh, inspired speech to our faculty members i am really yes. very grateful thank for your wonderful presentations and self confidence yes. among the teachers without presentations you are presented at impressive of my faculty members it's really very great 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 honor so in this great occasions now you knew to answer to our delicate questions i think my moderator will ask questions after this we no will go to thanks please uh uh vitra yes sir i'm here yes thank you sir uh, that was an value adding session for us and hereby yes. we have few participants raising up questions uh, to okay. just uh, analyze what they have uh, according to the talk we had right now so uh, okay. the first question is what are the strategies a teacher has to adopt to reach the self esteem Pardon, just come again. Is it audible, sir? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Just come again. Yeah. So, come again. what are the strategies a teacher yes. has to adopt to reach the self-esteem? Oh, to reach high self-esteem. Exactly. Yeah. Correct. Correct. So, yeah. I'll just come back to my to my speak. What I said. Remember, we we are uh, as professor. from bangladesh as was saying nazrul remember we are leaders he was talking so much about leadership remember we are leaders and i have said about sharpening our axe if you don't do a lot of research if you don't read okay if you don't read then you're always going to be at that level of low self esteem but if you do a lot of research and i'm really quoting a lot that phrase that before you give homework you must do a lot of homework if you don't do research then you are always going to be at the bottom you are always going to be at the bottom but if you want to so high if you want to be to go a, a notch higher if you want to go higher then a lot of research is needed you have to keep on sharpening you have to do a lot of studies you have to read a lot of books a lot of books here show me your library let me see your library then i'll tell what kind of teacher or what kind of professor you are but if you don't do a lot of reading then you're going to remain the same for 20 years or for 30 years okay so i i believe madam uh, i have given uh, yeah sir exactly answer. exactly yeah. thank you we'll go on for the next question sir okay how do you motivate the younger new faculties in your institution how will you motivate the younger new faculties in your institution okay that's a nice question madam so what I, what i'll do i will be an example first for me i should be an example all these answers i'll be giving from what i had spoken remember i said this first they will see you okay first they will see you then they will receive you Okay let me not come out to the point of receiving but first they will see you how do you do your work what time do you go to class okay what time do you go to class if the class should start at 8:30 or maybe at 9:30 in the indian system if the class starts at 9:30 are you there by 9:25 okay or do you go there at 9:50 when the lesson is almost over so then the younger the younger faculty members surely they will see Uh, professor uh professor nazrul islam from bangladesh i'm i'm really using his name because it's the name i was able to to get and professor samuel and a uh, professor here who is online with me i will know his name so how how is he handling it how is he handling so they are going they're going to be a role model okay you're going to be a role model so let them see you first what you're doing do you complete uh do you finish uh, i mean correcting the papers or evaluating your projects on time or if a project should take one month does it take six months so that's the only way you can motivate them you don't even need to speak you remember one statement says that actions speak louder than words so your actions are going to motivate these young faculty members that was great sir so yes. the next question is how to improve or enhance one self esteem for who now how, for the students how to how to improve or enhance one self esteem yes. for faculties for faculties uh, i had shared there before 
and I would want to say this, whichever negative point that you think that you have, whichever negative point that you think that you have, replace it with a positive, okay? So I had started by sharing, by saying this, I just know it won't work. Sometimes we say that, I know it can't work. Even sometimes we pass this kind of talk to the students. We say, I know it can't work for this student. I know he won't make it, okay? But try to replace it with a positive. I know it is going to work. Initially, we had said, or rather as a faculty had said, I know it can't work for him. I know it, work, it can't work for her. But you can put it this way. I know it is going to work, okay? Sometimes we also say, I know I won't complete this project on time. So replace it with a positive. I know I am going to make this project on time. Give yourself a target. So try to be thinking positively. Remember I said this, as a man thinks, what you think, so are you. So let us try to think positive. That was great, sir. So the next question is, do we need to have a line between the students and teachers? A line? Exactly. A line as in what? A gap? Do you mean a gap? Uh, it is not adapting. It is like kind of uh, maintaining a limit. No, I'm saying gap, a gap, a gap. You mean a gap? A limit? A limit, exactly. Yeah, okay, fine. Same as gap, a line. So there should be no limit. I think there should be no limit because the students should not fear the, the teacher. The students should not fear the, the lecturer or the professor. Remember, you are the guru here. They respect you. They honor you. Okay. Of course, there should be some respect or there should be that teacher-student relationship, but they should not fear you in any way whatsoever. There should be that accessibility. The student can come to you anytime. And especially now that the online uh, teachings are coming. So a, a student can call you, of course, at the time that he's supposed to be, he's supposed to call you, but you should be free. Okay, how can I help you here? Fine. This is how you do it. This is how you do it. But the students should not fear to come to you. But there should be that respect. Respect should be there, but they should not fear. We should not confuse respect and fear. Respect should be there, but they should not fear uh, the teacher. So that line should be, it should, there should be no line. I mean, there should be that mutual, mutual interaction. That's cool, sir. How yeah. self-awareness is important for achieving self-esteem? How? Self-awareness is important for achieving self-esteem. How self-awareness is important? To in, achieve self-esteem. Yeah. Yes, 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 yes. So that's a, that's a good question, but I believe we have uh, uh, some, some, some programs, you know, I may not want to go very deep. You know, we have, we are, we have different categories of people. Maybe you may have learned that in psychology. You have the melancholies, you have the phlegmatics, we have yes. the sanguines, and we have yes. the choleric. So sometimes, if you know who you are, you know, yeah. if you know who you are. Yeah, you can proceed, sir. Yeah, yeah. If you know who you are, if you know your personality, maybe you may have learned that about the personality traits. You know, some are sanguines, some are phlegmatics, some are cholerics, uh, some are melancholies. So if you know who you are, okay, we all have our personalities, then you can be able to know how to raise your, uh, se uh, raise your self esteem. Some people are a bit shy. Some people are a bit shy and that is a fact. You may not change that. But if you know who you are really, then you can work on that to build a, a, a high self esteem. And we all have weaknesses. You know, the SWOT analysis, the strength, the weaknesses, Okay, the opportunities, the threats, but nowadays they call them the challenges. So the SWOC analysis, what are your strengths? What are your weaknesses? Okay, what are your opportunities? So you can try to balance that. Let the opportunities be more. Let your strengths overcome the weaknesses and the challenges. So it's a matter of you knowing yourself. Yeah. Yeah, the next question is, how mentoring helps a teacher to facilitate students? Mentoring of the teacher or mentoring of the student? Is it, do you mean students, the teachers? Students. To be, mentoring how students. The teacher, okay, mentoring students. Yeah, it is key. It is very important. 
it is very important. When you're teaching, when you're there in the classroom, like initially when we were there at the, at the boards or at the PowerPoints, sometimes you can get, uh, are not getting completely off topic. Sometimes try to bring, try to bring some, try to intertwine, try to bring some topics, some subjects that maybe are not, let the class not be so formal that it's only, if it's chemistry, fully chemistry, but you can bring some points that are connected to chemistry also outside the world. Remember you're mentoring them. You're telling them if you do this industrial chemistry or if you do this biology or if you do this physics, then maybe you can work in this kind of, if you're doing physics, electrical engineering, you can go and work in the Indian railways. If you're doing engineering, maybe you can do uh, 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 this um, in, the, in, the, in the flights, you can do that kind of engineering. Then you can try just to mentor them. You can try to mentor them. So telling them, you have to work hard. If you want to be like so and so, he did this. So slightly touch on the, touch on the, on the subject completely, maybe completely on the subject, but slightly you can be going out to the outside world, show them what is the importance of this. You're just mentoring them. That's what I want to say. You are mentoring them in, 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 this, in the setting of like classroom teaching. Great, sir. So the yes. next question is, how yes. should a teacher maintain self-esteem with their senior faculties? When they are senior? When there is a senior with, faculty? No, no, with their, with their yes. senior faculties. Yes. Uh, what I believe here is uh, assume, assume, still, I'm, still I have some steps more to go and I believe God will help me to reach there. So if I become a senior faculty, how do I see maybe this new or this faculty who has just joined us, who is not so much in the field of, of teaching for maybe 30 years. Some of the professors that we have here, they are well experienced and we really salute them. God has given them that knowledge. Some of them 30 years in the teaching experience. So how do they see us? One question you asked about mentoring. You asked yes, about mentoring. So they should mentor, they should mentor us, the new ones, they should mentor us. They should not see that we are, we have just, because they also started somewhere. We all, we all start somewhere. Everybody starts somewhere. So they also started somewhere. So it's upon them. It's upon them to have that relationship, to have that relationship. It should not be like senior, junior. Of course, maybe in the cadre wise, it, there could be some seniority and like that. But let them bring them on board. Bring them on board. And because one time they will retire. So they will be happy and say, yes, I brought professor. Uh, Kumar, I brought, brought Professor Maran. Maran was brought by one professor and he's also going to bring another professor also. He's bringing, we are raising, we are raising people. That's the way it's always good to pass the baton. It's passing the baton. You know the race when they're running here in Kenya, we do a lot of races. So you pass the baton, but don't run with a baton and try to win the race alone. So pass the baton to you. To your, to your juniors, or you can just bring them slowly, train them, train them. I believe that's, that, that's, that's what I, I believe should yes, be. Sir. Madam, yeah. So uh, the last question is, is self-actualization yes, similar to self-esteem? Self-actualization, is it similar, is similar to, to self-esteem? Yeah, it could be, it could be, but I think self-esteem, and here self-esteem, we can put it in both ways. Low, first I kept it as self-esteem. So you can either have self, I mean low self-esteem and high self-esteem. So it's always good to try to balance and have a high uh, self-esteem. Great, sir. Yeah. So we are at the end of uh, question session. Uh, okay. Maran, sir. Yeah, you can move over to Dr. Dialand to give a word of thanks. I know. And also, I think so. Before the Dialand, just I would like to share some of my experience, uh, some of my senior colleagues, senior professors, and directors levels. Uh, just now, I am notifying people from Hyderabad uh, College, uh, the Gajodi, Dr. Gobadi, and uh, Lucy Abdras Manjula, then VIT Rose, uh, Professor uh, Gobi Kishan, 
there are n number of uh, the senior professors who are all participating in this great event not only from tamil nadu even ujjain or kashmir or pune or uh, what do you call uh, raipur there are different uh, institutions different place different parts of india the people participating i think uh, everything because of our uh, what happened organizing the event and also bringing people from the different countries different exposure different expertise so i think i hope all of you enjoy you have given a very excellent feedback about our program and also what we are doing for you so with this once again my grateful thank my dear friends to constantly supporting of our sairam group of institutional activities now i over to dr dayalan i give you a word of thanks a uh, gentleman i will talk to you later no problem okay oh, fine thank you dayalan sir enable the mic please enable the mic yeah. it is again on mute sir please enable the mic sir am i audible now yes sir ah uh, okay good evening to one and all first of all i would like to thank dr sam from kenya professor for coming and enlightening us on the role of the professor and how can we set as a leader and standard for the student community you spoke on the topic of this team staff you really opened the eyes of the faculty members who listen we may know these points in our hearts but when someone tells from abroad it really looks good in good and interesting and moreover and you talked about the how we can handle student how we have to be a mentor to the students all those topics you touch and uh, apart from that i would like to thank dr maran professor director of our sairam institute of management studies for bringing such a wonderful webinar to all the faculty throughout india and uh, from other parts of the world and i would thank to thank the sairam management for helping us in such organizing such uh, good webinars and uh, i at the esteem occasion I, i would like to thank all the participants who have participated eagerly and patiently listened to the wonderful lecture by dr sa thank you one and all thank you okay thank you my dear delegates again we will meet tomorrow by 2 pm i think uh, the faculty the 